Hi everyone. I'm excited to be here with you today. Before we kick off, I want to ask you a question. How are you watching this video today? Most likely you're watching this on your laptop or desktop, maybe on your mobile phone. Technology today is 2D. It's how we consume most, most of our content and interact with one another in meetings or events like this one. In the future, we have a vision that we will be able to be in a shared space together. We won't be talking to each other through a 2D screen. We'll be sitting around one table. We'll be able to physically turn left and right to look at each other, even if we're thousands of miles apart. This is actually how my team has meetings already in VR. I have folks in London, Seattle, New York, and I'm myself based in California. But when we are in our team meeting, we actually are all sitting together on one table and we're discussing different topics, but it really feels like we're having that conversation physically in the same space. There's really no more talking over each other, no more of that awkward, you go first, no, you go first, or you're going to say something. Because you can see when someone is about to talk, you can turn towards them. There's spatial audio. You, you're, you're even able to react to each other, high five. It really truly does feel like you're physically together even when you're miles apart. At Meta, we've always thought of technology as a tool for fostering connection, bringing people closer together. And we see the metaverse as this next generation of the internet where you feel like you're in the experience instead of looking at it as we do today. My name is Agrin Shorman, and I lead our efforts across Meta for avatars. I've been at Meta for nine years and spend most of my time here working on identity experiences. First leading profile and identity in Facebook app, now building avatars in reality labs. I'm really excited to share some of our progress and our vision for the metaverse today, how identity and representation are really core to that vision, and share some of the learnings from how we've approached building representation at scale. If there are three things to take away from this talk, I hope you will, one, learn more about the metaverse, two, learn more about avatars. I'll unpack how we are building representation at scale for 3 billion people. And three, gain learnings from how we have approached complex technical problems at scale, like building centralized infrastructure across multiple platforms. But first, if we were to take a step back, this is not the first time in our lives that we've experienced a significant shift in computing platforms. Generational shifts in technology tend to come with a side of skepticism. In 1994, less than 30 years ago, experts and the general public believed the internet was hyped because it's hard to understand and because they had never seen or experienced it before. Kind of similar to metaverse today. But people quickly found ways to create unique experiences and build value with internet. Starting with communication, access to information, and even entertainment. And we access that information by sitting down and reading content. Consuming what was published by pages in front of a computer at home or at work. Then a major shift happened. The internet became social. Social media began connecting people and enabling users to generate content. So all of a sudden we went from consuming content to producing content ourselves. And then this shift was greatly accelerated by the proliferation of mobile devices, which allowed people to stay connected all the time and produce content on the go. The evolution of wearable tech and more complex 3D graphics in the last decade enabled emergence of more immersive experiences across devices where you're experiencing being there with others. So you're not consuming and producing, but you're actually experiencing in this new world. This is what I call early immersive metaverse experiences. When I put on the headset and jump into a game or a meeting, it truly is an immersive experience where I'm there with others. But we believe Actually, most people will experience the metaverse first through their avatars on screens. In fact, 
1 billion meta avatars have been already created. Avatars will be connected tissue from today's social and messaging experiences on Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook, and tomorrow's more immersive ones in VR and AR. And it's an incredibly challenging task because it will require a flexible and transferable sense of self across 2D screens, VR, and AR. We're still in very early stages of our journey towards building the metaverse. But how do we build an avatar system that can be representative of billions of people around the world and work across all of these experiences on mobile, across all the apps that I just mentioned that we, we work on, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, third-party applications, on screens, and in VR and AR immersive experiences? That is the question I want to dig into today with you. Building avatars at scale to represent the identities of billions of people is wildly difficult. Your identity and representation is deeply personal and requires a highly nuanced approach. It means creating a scaled solution that works for all ages, all demographics, genders, cultures, and communities. The nuance of each aspect of identity is critical for building affinity and ensuring that people feel truly represented and that they can express themselves fully with their avatars. How do you build that at scale for 3 billion people? For example, it's as simple of a question as how many nose options do you offer in the creation flow of the avatar? What are the technical challenges of automatically generating an avatar from your photo? What if someone doesn't want to look exactly as themselves and don't want an avatar that's created off their photo? Or finding the right balance between performance and number of avatars that can show up in one shared space? Or how do we scale one avatar style to look good in 3D VR experiences, 2D mobile, static stickers and Facebook comments, and in Reels? Most experiences that you see exist today focus on just one of these use cases, either messaging or immersive spaces, either screen or VR. Nobody's trying to tackle this across all of these experiences at the same time. Or how do we create a style that people would feel comfortable with in both work professional environment, like work rooms, and in social or game environment where they may be hanging out with their friends? There's also the hard questions we had to answer as we're building this product. Our first major problem was understanding what exactly helps people feel like their avatar represents them. From research, we found that people want an avatar that is able to represent an idealized self. Avatars serve two equally important user needs, representing a recognizable self and supporting expression of aspirational looks. For the former, avatars need to be recognizable and represent people by capturing some of the person's core traits. These can either be physical, like skin tone, face shape, or related to their identity, like soccer enthusiasts. But interestingly, high accuracy for likeness on its own is not enough for people to have affinity towards their avatar. They also want the option of creating an aspirational self by being able to explore different options for their representation. It's kind of like how I might try out different hairstyles, makeup, or clothing to polish my own look, and put my best self forward. People want optionality in their avatars. To help with this, we needed to deeply understand who our users were and how we could do something that works for all of them. So we researched, we found that there are three layers of representation from in the middle foundational elements that are core to how people literally show up physically, your hair, your skin tone, your face shapes, to more fluid aspects like clothing and accessories that may say something about you, to ways people express themselves, how you smile, how you walk. From this, we learned that getting the foundation right was critical. But an important nuance here is that what's foundational for identity is actually different depending on who you talk to. For example, for differently abled community, it was essential to support wheelchairs, cochlear implants, and hearing aids, which are critical aspects of identity. At that time, we worked with various organizations 
focused on wheelchair accessibility to ensure we understand the nuance of how they want it to be represented. Even if only a small percentage of our total user base, it was important for us to make sure that we get this right. And we're building with inclusivity in mind and engaging a lot of external stakeholders early so we could do that right. That's just one example. Inclusivity also means supporting a myriad of ways people style themselves through their hair and makeup, accessories, and clothing. To get this right, we require extensive conversations with our community and collaboration across art, technical art, engineering, to incorporate the feedback into our creative process. And inclusivity didn't mean visual, just visually. We needed, for example, stickers that represent different ways people express themselves, including cultural and demographic nuance, for verbal and nonverbal expression around the world, because it truly varies greatly in different locations. So with all the permutations for representation and expression, how do you then balance that technical complexity across multiple platforms? How do you build something that translates seamlessly across VR, which is very immersive full body experience, small flat mobile stickers and Facebook comments, for example, 3D versions of you on screens, if you're playing an immersive game on your laptop, and in third-party developer apps who are using RS SDK. You need to focus on flexible systems that can work across multiple clients versus siloed by surface. So the complexity of building for 3 billion people starts with how we build the avatars themselves. All avatars are made up of 3D geometry, textures, and skeletons. Think of the skeleton just like your bones, on top of which we then apply physical appearance, clothing, accessories, and then apply expressions. When we started, we had different avatar systems for different platforms, so different skeletons, the whole system. Our avatars to support social experiences in Facebook were different from VR and did not talk to each other. So if you made a change as a user, if you made a change in the avatar in one place, it actually wouldn't reflect in another. And as a matter of fact, if you created an avatar in one place, you would have to go and create everything from scratch in the other. To make both our work more efficient and create a more scalable experience for our users, we had to build a single centralized character system. This required thinking deeply about the things like human proportions that work in social apps and in VR, and finding solutions that work for both. And then the avatars are driven by a thing we call a rig. So you have your skeleton, the textures, the geometry that makes up the avatar itself. And then the rig is what's driving it, the behavior system. The rig is used to author and reflect human movement and behavior. Think about your closest friends and family, how they walk, move, sit down. It's probably different. The rig gives our avatars the ability to represent the nuanced movements for 3 billion people who may be all using avatars in different ways. From there, how do we scale this stack to operate across platforms with various levels of technical complexity? We had to create something what I, I really refer to as centralized infrastructure with experience level personalization. So to do this at scale, it was in first important to invest in foundational infrastructure that allowed us to build and ship one avatar system across all apps. From the user perspective, that means if you're creating an avatar on Instagram, you should be able now to use it in all the different apps across Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger, and in VR, and in the future across third-party apps as well. And when new stylistic avatar implementation shifts, so for example, the normal proportions I just talked about, or some other changes that we're constantly improving on the avatar system, it actually shows up across all these platforms right immediately. You don't have to wait or implement or do extra work for it to show up in each unique experience. This was an important first step. But now we also need to think about personalization at the experience level. Perhaps certain outfits or looks make more sense in one place and not the other. So we need to figure out now, now that we have this common foundation, how do we build more personalization per app or per experience? So we've talked a lot about 
product problems and technical problems. But what I really want to end on is how we can build an interoperable metaverse together. The metaverse isn't something we're building in a vacuum. We're working with a lot of creators, businesses, developers to help bring the metaverse and the avatar ex ecosystem to life. It's going to require lots of partnerships over the coming years. And as we look towards the future, technologists are taking incredible bets for experimenting and learning how to build towards the metaverse. A lot of this work is challenging, but it's not a stretch to say that the immersive experiences we're collectively working on today will impact every aspect of social interaction when we get there. There's lots of unique learnings in the short term. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you're inspired by the truly enormous potential of this new technology frontier in the coming years. And you'll join us on this journey. I can't wait to see what y'all will build in the metaverse.